Here's uh, the much awaited interview, Nikunj in conversation with none other than IHCL's Puneet Chatwal. The word anti-fragile literally means a company or a business which can withstand external volatility, can be resilient, but even more, it can really sustain extraordinary twists and turns. And that's the story of Indian hotels. For a business which was written off, has made a comeback. For a company where question marks were read, now markets are celebrating. So what's the, literally, when you're talking to a hotel company, the word is, what is the secret sauce here? How the company has managed to turn this around? And is this the best we have for the hotel industry? Now to discuss all that and much more, about the man who some would say, arguably, is the architect of the turnaround, Puneet Chatwal of Indian Hotel. Good to have you, sir. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you, Nikunj. Thank you. For a company which reported repo record loss in COVID, record profit after uh, two years, stock at an all-time high, high five for that. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Yes, it is. But I would not call it anti-fragile. I would rather call it resilience. And I think the industry, the entire hotel sector, has demonstrated resilience like possibly nobody else except for tourism and aviation. And that makes us proud. It's not just us. The entire sector has bounced back. And in our case, of course, our strategy, our strategic guidance, our guidance on Avant 2025 mm -hmm. has uh, uh, taken a good start. Let's say this is yeah. the first quarter with Avan, And uh, we are very pleased with it. Margins at an all-time high. I've never seen Indian hotels report margins of 30% plus. These were unheard of margins. And we're looking at the consolidated picture, not the India business, which is the good part now. Is this largely because of cost-cutting debt reduction or just a business high? Well, it's a change in the business model. Okay. So from a absolutely asset-heavy company, uh, we have been working since the last five years on balancing the portfolio. That's our guidance also that we will have a balanced portfolio of 50% in owned and leased business and the other 50% uh, of the portfolio to be driven by fee-based business. With that, we have also added new businesses and even though the ginger name is a bit old, uh, but the entire brand has been reimagined, the entire portfolio has been re-engineered for its margin and also that is true for our balance sheet. Our capital structure has also been restructured and re-engineered. And uh, we are very pleased with also the new initiatives like AMA, like Human. They are all based on incremental cost and incremental revenue models. So they drive high margin despite very low contribution today, but it's rising every day. So we are very pleased with the new businesses as they are high margin businesses, our innovations with our old businesses, like the private membership club chambers, mm -hmm. taking it international, taking it in Dubai, London. Today we took a decision to open chambers in New York. So we start working on it, we start planning on it at the pier. And uh, we have also taken a decision to open it in Bangalore. So, you know, the chambers as a private membership club becomes uh, one of a very unique value proposition and it's been around for 40 years, but we we changed the value proposition and we repositioned that too. So I think the sum of all this is beginning to reflect in the EBITDA margins uh, that is coming up on the consolidated level, as you rightly said, because we do have hotels in London and Cape Town and San Francisco and, and, and New York, and there it is very difficult to drive such high margins as you're able to do so on the Indian subcontinent. When we spoke last in this lovely corridor, there was a problem on the COVID front, Omicron. And I distinctly remember you said India is okay, but I, I may have problems in St. James. I may have problems in uh, my New York uh, hotel. Has all that become history now? A friend of mine stayed at St. James for Wimbledon and he said it's impossible to forget getting a hotel room. It's impossible to get a restaurant table now. There. Uh, actually, um, your friend is right, and I can confirm that uh, London has had the best month ever, uh, and that was the last month in July. Uh, also, London has performed uh, for the first quarter higher than the pre-COVID level by, by 15%. Uh, US is still 10 to 15% behind, but I think as of this quarter, things will start changing. 
at the latest in the month of September when we have the, uh, you know, the UN General Assembly, I think uh, uh, the business mix and the business expectations will clearly uh, go ahead of 1920 actual numbers that we have done. San Francisco is a small, uh, lovely property in the best location. So is New York, but, uh, but San Francisco has never been uh, a challenge. It was profitable before also. And we are very excited because we acquired uh, the remaining 50% stake uh, of Cape Town during COVID. And uh, the season in Cape Town begins as of October. That's their summer. So we are very uh, anxious and excited to look, uh, you know, to look how that will evolve. And that should also add to our top line as well as bottom line. This is the best margin I've seen in Indian hotels. Called positive cash flow for the first time? No, we have had that in Q3 in 1920 before also. 1920? 1920. 1920. 1920. That's 100 years ago. No, 1920, not that way. I meant uh, the year, financial okay. year. Okay, so after, for the first time, for the first time, yeah. cash flows have become positive. positive. Now the second half will be better. The that second half should be better. And that means margins have, will expand. We are, we are net positive when it comes to debt. Okay. So uh, we are making one payment uh, in the next few days, which is due. And the second is due only in April of next year. So because it's a debenture. Uh, we are keeping the extra cash that we have uh, through our uh, equity raise um, in a separate account for that purpose. So that part is that part makes us feel very comfortable. And the guidance that we have given is uh, not only at the EBITDA level is 33%, yeah. but the, the flow through from EBITDA to PBT and PAT should improve because what is left is just depreciation or certain financial costs because of the change in the accounting. Uh, wherever we have leases. Uh, so there will be some kind of uh, financial uh, expenses out there, but very limited versus what we are used to uh, from a, on a historical basis. So the revenge travel, it's a word which we lo loosely use because suddenly all of us are surprised and shocked with the hotel occupancy. How much of that is sugar rush? How much of that is cyclical? And how much of that is a trend? I think... Um, it's not really a revenge travel. I, actually, we in the hospitality sector don't like to call what we do as a host, hosting people, that all these people we're hosting are coming because of some revenge. We would like to believe they're coming because they like to be here, they like to be seen, they like to enjoy life, especially when people have lost their near and dear ones because of COVID. The attitude for definitely the short term has changed. Let me enjoy today. You know, I don't know what is happening in future or not, but let me also have a good time today. So I think that is one factor which you rightly point out has benefited the industry. The second is a permanent change. What COVID permanent did, change in terms of approach, attitude, and approach hospitality. Approach and attitude. Be people are driving mm -hmm. to a, on, a, on a holiday. Not many did that. Very mm -hmm. few did that before. But COVID kind of forced people to actually drive themselves mm -hmm. and take the family with them. And people had a good experience. So it's now become a part and parcel uh, of people's life. The third is obviously the return of the business uh, demand. That is the delta for you. That is the delta for us. So that is, that is working well. And especially in this quarter, it is Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, whether it is because of IPL or it's because of the government delegations or the Africa summit that we recently had in Delhi or as of December, the G20 that is starting. Yeah. All this is going to uh, support the growth of room nights in our industry and the growth of room rates in our industry. So there is no plan to get debt back irrespective of what assets no. are there? we have given the guidance a zero debt and we want to stick to that. Even if a great asset is suddenly available at a good price, you will not venture there? We, I hope we are able to generate enough free cash flows uh, mm. to and get uh, strategic investment partners like the platform we have with GIC mm -hmm. or also, uh, you know, uh, with the group companies. Uh, there are different group companies which do investments in real estate. I hope we can work with them and become really true to our core business of running hotels and not building and owning hotels. Uh, yes, there are certain investments we have committed to. And that is a part of our 
work ethics, our culture, our history, our past, like creating Goa as a destination, creating Havelock, Andamans as a destination, creating Kerala as a destination. No, we are working on Kevadia, uh, where the Statue mm -hmm. of Unity is. Mm -hmm. We are working on, uh, we've just got the letter of award for uh, two islands mm -hmm. in Lakshwadi. So some of those uh, investments we will do and we will figure out at the right time what uh, will be the platform. That's from the existing cash flows. That's either from the existing or we'll get somebody to partner with us once the assets are done and are finished. 